towns, cities, islands. When it comes to designing your own Pokemon adventure, the places you go are just as important as the creatures you meet. A town is a refuge from wild encounters, a place where trainers can rest up and freely explore. A town is also the central hub of many in-game events, a place where important characters meet. Today, I, Substitute, will go over my own process of designing a fake Pokemon town, or city, or village, whatever floats your boats, aspiring artists. For the sake of consistency, I'll refer to them as towns for the rest of the video. They don't call it a city map now, do they? Inspiration. You can make a town out of a few random buildings, but part of the fun is fully fleshing out and enjoying the process. Get inspired. One inspiration source is the very world we live in. As the Pokemon company has done itself, many locations borrow aspects from real world counterparts. Lumios, Castelia, and Saffron, for example, base themselves on Paris, New York, and Tokyo, respectively. Another source I'd like to draw from is the Pokemon anime. There are many anime exclusive locations that never appear in games. The movies especially have unique and elaborate locations that may be worth your interpretation. As I've said from other videos, inspiration can come from just about anywhere. For this tutorial's example, I'm choosing to model one after the anime's version of Pallet Town, as well as a bit of my old neighborhood. Function. The step is an important one that will shape your creative choices. I like to ask myself first, what's this location's purpose? Is it the starting town? Is it the region's capital, filled to the brim with activities? Is it where legendary lore is introduced? Is it a peaceful resting spot before a long stretch of wilderness? In answering questions like these, you'll start to get an idea of what buildings your town requires. For my example, I'm choosing to make a starting town. Key events. As an offshoot of the previous step, identifying key in-game events directly applies to playable towns. If yours is not destined to be in a game, use these suggestions for plot instead. You know the drill by now. Question yourself. Where in the story do you visit this town? What plot points need conveying? Is there a gym battle? Is there a rival battle? Is there an upcoming encounter with the evil team? Is there a secret to foreshadow? Is there a new game mechanic that needs to be taught? Is there a new item that needs explaining? Is there a new species of Pokemon nearby? Identifying key events will not only inform what places need to be included, but also what characters and dialogue hints will be required to do so. For my example, key events are the player meeting parents, the player meeting their rival, the player meeting the professor and getting a Pokemon, the player seeing locations saved for later in the game. Essentials. Now that we've identified our town's needs, begin construction. The town's made of these basic components. A name that shares a common theme with others in the region. Colors, plants, clouds. A town motto, usually in the vein of location name. Insert a brief one sentence description here. Three or more buildings. That seems to be the bare minimum, at least in the games. A mart and poke center. Small villages and starting towns seem to be the exception. Points of interest. Essentially, the main attraction of the place. Geography. Mountains, plains, ocean and people. I'll go into some of these more in depth later on. For my example, I've named my town Bloomberg Town, since my region's town names are based on flowers. Its slogan is, a town on the precipice of change. Points of interest. Small points of interest are pretty simple. A gym here and there, maybe a game corner, or the house of an important character. You may have already come up with these during your previous brainstorming session. A memorable town, however, typically has a main attraction that makes it easy to identify. Fuchsia City has a safari zone, Miss Droughton's airport, Anastar City's sundial, Mauville City's mega mall, Alamos Town's space-time tower, Ecrutique's tin and burn towers, Lavender Town's Pokemon tower. There's a lot of towers. You get the idea though. Give your location landmarks, activity centers, and an intriguing centerpiece to top it all off. For my example, Bloomberg Town's points of interest are the player's house, which is also a Pokemon, the rival's house, the Pokemon lab, and a seaside cave out of reach. Layout. You have the locations in mind, time to place them. 
In general, I like to align the buildings on a grid. Which, I assume that's what real city planners use, right? Grids? I don't know. It just takes a bit of common sense for the remaining layout. Consider the inhabitants. Are there enough houses to fit the town's population? Is your city a maze to navigate? Should half of it be inaccessible due to one single cut bush? Gameplay wise, it should be interesting to explore. Logic wise, people should also be able to live their day to day lives without putting up with stuff like this. The last thing I have to say about this is consideration for the player if it's a game town. Not too much empty space since there should always be something in sight and not too cramped since the player will probably ride bikes. Also, having a Poke Center near where the player first enters the town is nice too since they're probably weakened from battles along the way. Population A town is just a collection of buildings until it has inhabitants. The town's population is a way to express its culture as well as convey important information as mentioned before. Give them key dialogue hints or just have them say funny stuff. Your choice. For games, important NPCs like fishing gurus, name raiders, move deleters, move tutors, gym leaders, and so on are also important to add. This town of mine only has a rival in parents, yes, plural, and the professors, also plural. The rest are just there to give exposition and introduce early game mechanics. Miscellaneous. You got the important stuff out of the way. Here's the extra credit. Architecture and art direction. This would be from your initial inspiration. Culture. Also from your initial inspiration. Do they have festivals? Do they have a local urban legend? Is there some ritual involving the town's main attraction? Theme song. This mainly applies to the game version of towns. Main attractions aside, music is iconic to the town's identity. Roof color. This is also a game thing. Creation. Make your town. Make it your own. Any way you want it. You can use the map editor, tile layer, you can draw by hand, paint it by hand, even create a miniature of it. Your town, your choice. That's all there is to it. So aspiring town designer, you made yourself a town. If you like to, be sure to share the completed work in the comments down below. My next tutorial video will be on how to design a gym, so keep an eye out for that. To stay up to date on design oriented Pokemon videos, why not become a Substitute subscriber? Seriously though, why not? Just do it. Until next time, bye.